Has someone ever said to you, trust me, I know what I'm doing? Now, did you believe them? <laughs> I guess it depends on the person, right? When someone asks you to trust them, your brain starts immediately trying to figure out if this person in question is trustworthy. Like, if they keep their word, have followed through with you before, or just generally speaking, makes wise choices with their life. For some, trusting other people is easy. For others, not so much. This can be especially true for those circus performers who soar through the air on the flying trapeze. Those trapeze artists have to trust each other with their lives. They trust the trapeze itself, the workers who installed the equipment, and the person on the other side of the arena hanging and ready to catch whoever launches themselves through the air, not for the faint of heart. But you don't need a circus to tell you that trust is important. Every day we face moments where we need to trust someone or someone needs to trust us. Not to mention how all of us need to continually learn to trust God with whatever happens in our lives. If we want to live the life God has for us, we need to be able to trust each other, which is why we're taking this month of September to discover what it means to trust. We define trust like this, putting your confidence in someone you can depend on. There's a phrase we often say around here. In fact, it's one of our three basic truths. I can trust God no matter what. It's a simple phrase, but it's something that we need to revisit often because we will also face moments where we need to trust God. We know that God is someone that we can depend on. We want our kids to know that too. That's why we've chosen Proverbs 3.5 as our memory verse. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Our own understanding can have a way of getting us in trouble sometimes, especially when life doesn't turn out how we want or expect. That's why it's important that our trust is grounded in God's love for us and God's willingness to do whatever it takes to have a relationship with us. If we don't trust, we might miss the opportunity to watch God show up and do what only God can do. And we have four stories from the Bible that can help us learn to trust God a bit more. We continue our journey through God's big story and start the month picking up where we left off in August with Abraham's story. In Genesis, we discover that God's promise to Abraham took longer than Abraham might have thought or wanted. This tested Abraham's trust in God, but God met Abraham and renewed the covenant with Abraham. Eventually, Abraham and Sarah have a son and name him Isaac. God's promise to Abraham is coming true. Bottom line, trust God even when you have to wait. Next, we discover what happened when Isaac ventured out on his own. In Genesis 26, Isaac moved to a region where he reclaimed the wells that had belonged to his father, Abraham. For years, no one had cared about the wells until they were reopened. Then everyone started fighting over them. Instead of fighting, Isaac showed he trusted God and decided to give away the wells in order to make peace. Isaac simply walked away from what was rightfully his. God continued to show faithfulness to Isaac. Eventually, the people saw that God had Isaac's back. They backed away and left Isaac in peace. Bottom line, trust God no matter what. Then in week three, we meet Isaac's sons, Jacob and Esau. From the moment they were born, Jacob and Esau always had a complicated relationship. Jacob eventually took advantage of Esau's moment of exhaustion. Of course, Esau was angry and Jacob might have wondered how God felt about him after swindling his brother's birthright and blessing out from under him. But in a dream, God reminded Jacob of the promise to his grandfather Abraham. God loved Jacob and could be trusted. God renewed the covenant that started with Abraham. God always keeps a promise. Bottom line, you can trust that God has a plan. We finish up the month learning what happened to Jacob and Esau's relationship. We discover that after years of living away from Esau, Jacob knows that God wants him to return home. After all that has happened, Jacob is worried about how Esau will respond to him. Jacob goes above and beyond to ensure his safety, but God has already prepared the way. Jacob and Esau reconcile. Esau goes home to his family and Jacob camps with his family in Canaan. Bottom line, you can trust God even when you're worried. This month, remember that you get to be a trustworthy person who can show up each week and impact how kids experience God. Let's keep introducing them to God's big story and help them discover how the God of the universe can be trusted no matter what.